welcome to the Idea Space podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, a hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want. And it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to episode five of the Idea Space podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. And today I am broadcasting to you one week before Thanksgiving. And I want to talk about my family's Thanksgiving and what I've realized about what we do to ourselves around the holiday season. This is typically the time of year where we start to indulge ourselves. We're we're very busy, we're overwhelmed with plans, and we also wonder how the hell we're going to get everything done. Now, in my family, my dad's been the cook for years, and what he does is he gathers his family around food. He kind of shows his love via cooking. He's an amazing cook, and if you came to dinner at our house, he would make you pretty much what whatever you wanted, and it would be amazing. So in our family, Thanksgiving has not just been about a meal of turkey stuffing and mashed potatoes. It was an event. It was a whole bunch of incredible appetizers and desserts and all kinds of things that felt so delicious and indulgent. We didn't really indulge in drinking in my family, but we definitely indulged in food. And if you're a typical American, then this probably sounds familiar to you because Thanksgiving kicks off holiday indulgences in America. If you remember last week's podcast, I have an argument to make about these indulgences. And my point is that I've realized indulging only feels good right before we do it. It rarely feels good on the other side because on the other side is usually a regret hangover that lasts far too long and more importantly, keeps you from the goals you set for yourself. So this Thanksgiving, I have some bad news for you. You do not deserve to indulge this Thanksgiving. You did hear me right. Yes, you do not deserve to indulge. Here's what I mean. You don't deserve to indulge in worrying that you're going to screw up the turkey or the pie or bring the wrong kind of wine to the party. You don't deserve to indulge in comparing yourself to your family, your friends, or even your old self. You don't deserve to indulge in too much of everything, too much planning, too much eating, too much drinking, too much overgiving. You don't deserve to indulge in that. Are you tired of stuffing yourself with something that'll make you feel like crap tomorrow, whether it's dessert or self-judgment? If you said yes, then you're like most of us. Another way to think about this is, is there anything that you do for yourself for quote unquote enjoyment that actually causes you pain? Let me give you some examples. For me, uh, it was when I saw a beautiful pair of expensive new boots that would look amazing with a certain pair of pants. They might have been out of my budget, but I would still buy them because I could see how gorgeous they would look or I would imagine it in my head, but then I would have to pay the bill. I also do this with, you know, if there's a plate of brownies in front of me, I am going to have a lot of chatter in my head about what's going on, how good it will taste, how good it will feel in my mouth. It's the anticipation that I like. But on the other side of that, I'm really uncomfortable. It actually causes me pain. Here's another thing that causes me pain. My best friend's husband makes the most delicious Cosmos I've ever had in my life. And he has them in these really fancy, beautiful, giant martini glasses. And there's just so much anticipation before I drink it. And when I indulge in it, I actually feel like crap the next day. So you're probably like me. We all do this. We all indulge in things that feel good in the moment, but make us suffer or cause us discomfort or cause us great regret. Why do we do this? 
Why do we indulge in behaviors and thoughts that generally screw us over? And I'll tell you why. It's because it's so much easier to indulge than it is to choose a non-indulgent option. For example, if you had to make the choice between having a hard conversation with someone in your family or just staying on the surface and avoiding the person, which one would you choose? You'd probably choose the easy button, right? The avoiding, whatever it would take to avoid having the hard conversation. It might mean to agreeing to things that you don't even agree with, but it would avoid the non-indulgent option, which would be to have a hard conversation. We all do this. So maybe it means we don't choose to speak up when we should or to stay quiet when we should. Maybe it means saying no to something and possibly causing a ruckus. Those are, those are hard things to do. And rather than do those hard things, we will often choose to quote unquote indulge because it makes us feel better in the moment. Some other things that we tend to do, especially around the holidays, that's why I'm doing this episode, is we will choose to engage in drama or gossip because that's what other people around us are doing and it will feel harder to not do that. So we indulge in something that doesn't serve us because it's just easier. Obviously, avoiding food or drink that doesn't work for us is harder and so it's just easier to sure I'll have the beer, sure I'll have the dessert. And, you know, saying something that might make you think you're being difficult, you might avoid doing that because it feels like it's too hard to just be yourself. Ultimately, we lie about what serves us. Our brains lie to us because it's just easier. Those things are uncomfortable and hard. And when we continually lie to ourselves, it makes it incredibly hard to move toward our goals. So I'm going to ask you a question now, and you might not know the answer, and that's okay, but you've got to get to the bottom of it at some point. What do you really want? And I mean, what do you want for you? Not for your kids or your partner or your business associates or your clients. What do you want for you? If you don't know right now, that's okay. Don't spin out in self-shaming and self-judgment, but I want you to know that when you stay stuck in saying, I don't know what I want, that's another way that you are indulging because it doesn't move you toward your goals. So here's what I'm committing to. I've decided to avoid indulging this holiday season in self-sabotage, self-judgment, and self-pity. I will not indulge in drama, negativity, and gossip. And you know that's always hard because that's what that's what goes on at the holiday time, especially at gatherings and parties. It's easy to get sucked in, right? And also it's easy to get sucked into worrying, overdoing, and overpleasing because you know that there's that person in your friend group or on your Facebook or Instagram feed or in your family who's overdoing everything and you think you need to do the same thing. Please don't indulge in those things. Because though they might feel good in the moment, and perhaps everyone around you will also be indulging in them, they will give you a regret hangover. They will not move you toward your goals. So ask yourself how you can enjoy yourself without indulging in thoughts and behaviors and beliefs that cause you pain. Remember the three tools from last week? Get aware. And that's basically what's your favorite indulgence it's indulgence as it relates to Thanksgiving. Get real. Does it really serve you? Only you can decide that. And get moving. Now is the time to take baby steps forward. Don't put your life on pause because you're waiting until after the holidays. I'll tell you that will really not serve you when January comes along. You're going to regret not having moved forward for the past eight weeks. So Focus just on the next week. You've got a week until the holiday. You'll make lots of choices in between them. Give thanks to the awareness that you're about to have because it will move you toward that thing that you really want. And I just want to extend a happy Thanksgiving as you approach this week. I hope you're surrounded by people that you love to be with. And I hope that you're one of those people that you love to be with yourself because that That is what you deserve, my friend, not indulgence. You deserve to nurture yourself. I'll see you next week. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and I'll talk to you then. Bye. 
Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Bye.